Hi, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time with us, welcome and please subscribe. Today I'm going to take this 17 inch board that I bought at Hobby Lobby and turn it into a wonderful gift for my daughter who loves cheese. So I'm going to turn this board into a cheese board because my daughter loves cheese and we like to um, have a layout of cheeses. So this board of course can also be used as a charcuterie board and if you'll stay and watch till the end I'll tell you how you can get some printed information about charcuterie boards and uh, some of the elements that create a really good charcuterie board. So the first thing I did is uh, I took a design that I made in Cricut Design Space and then I cut it out on my Cricut. Now uh, I used some uh, sort of iridescent foil, I used some adhesive vinyl and what I found out is that when all was said and done the adhesive vinyl actually adhered to the board better and was easier for weeding and just overall made a better uh, product for creating a stencil and so I went through and uh, using my design Using my design, I cut out several different names of cheeses and uh, I'm putting those around the outside circle of the board. And uh, it, this actually was a lot of fun to make. It took me uh, several days because it's a very big board and it took me a while to exactly size the design. And I'm going to see if I can make that design available to you uh, some how I'm not exactly sure how to do that because I did it in Cricut Design Space and uh, it, I'm going to try to learn how to convert that into something that I could give you a free link to so if anybody has any suggestions about that be sure to let me know and so once I got all of these different uh, cheeses weeded and uh, ready I went ahead and I put them around that original circle that I positioned right in the middle of the board and of course as you saw uh, earlier I measured that very carefully when I was positioning that circle because everything was based around that big outside circle. So here is the middle of uh, what's going on the board and it says home is where the cheese is and that's very actually true for our family and this uh, using this adhesive vinyl was so much easier to weed than was uh, the metallic iridescent stuff and it actually was easier to apply and uh, it held down better than uh, than the other one and so this is the design and I just went through and carefully weeded all the parts and as you see uh, it's a very big design so I actually cut off uh, parts of it as I went so that I wasn't handling all of that vinyl uh, all at once. I just did it in sections and then cut off what was the big bulk of it and, and then just weeded through it in stages. Okay, and then once I had everything situated, the middle put in just like I liked it. And I'm sorry, I don't have the footage of me actually 
transferring that and putting it down. I lost that footage and sorry. And so because I was using this um, transfer tape that I got from Amazon that I really love, it has just the perfect amount of, of adhesive, of tack. And so I was actually used, able to use one piece repeatedly and got a lot of those uh, cheese names down with one piece of transfer tape. And I will link that transfer tape below because it is my favorite and I really, really like it. So I started with the longest cheese name and uh, cut the transfer tape that size. And then I slowly went through and, and as I did shor shorter and shorter cheese names, I was able to cut that down and uh, be able to just go from a large piece of transfer tape transfer tape to a smaller one and just used very little to get all of those uh, names of the cheeses on and uh, there are so many cheese possibilities and so I made sure that I included her three or four top favorite cheeses and so that also uh, made this board more personal and fun for her. I really did not have to do much prep on the board before I uh, put on my stencil. I did sand it and just make sure it was nice and smooth. And I looked at the board and made sure that the, the wood grain lines made sense with the words and everything that I was putting on. As you see, there is sort of a dark wood grain line running through part of it. I didn't mind that at all. I thought it gave it some care character and so uh, I just was careful with the placement as I went along and then as I put each part of the stencil down I really uh, kind of burnished that down with my scraper tool to get those letters nice and tight to the wood uh, and so I did that burnishing before I removed the transfer tape so that I could really get that down in such a way that no paint would slip under those letters and so that's an important thing the sanding and then of course I wiped off the sanding and then got all the letters put down so now comes the really fun part and that was painting so I used a just a regular old craft paint I went through and made sure every little piece was down as fully as I could tell with my fingers make sure nothing was raised or bumpy and then I just came through with a uh, warm brown craft paint and just carefully went over the top of all of uh, that stem I used a foam brush and I did not load a lot of paint on the brush each time because I didn't want any seepage under the stencil and so you'll see I'm just carefully doing that a little bit of a t at a time. I did the entire outside with all of the names of the cheeses and got that done and then I went ahead and did the inside just small amounts of paint and uh, because this is a little bit of a rustic cheese board um, I'm I'm doing the best I can but I'm not too worried if there's an occasional uh, little error smudge tiny little bleed through and you'll see it actually came out just right and this was really a fun part of it and so then here I go and I'm just doing that light paint right in the middle so what worked well was I would put the paint down with the foam brush and then I'd come back through with a cloth I actually used cloth not paper because I wanted it soft I didn't want any scratching and then I came back through with my cloth and just kind of uh, rubbed that around picked up any leftover paint and then at the very end I made sure that that paint was in every little nook and cranny and then came the fun part which was taking off all of that stencil and it was so fun as I took that off to see that lighter wood grain underneath I think it turned out so pretty and it really was fun
fun to uh, do the reveal and take up all of that, that stencil. That was probably the most fun part of all. As you see, my Cricut weeding tool came in so handy for getting all of those stencil letters up because they were small and I was very careful to not scratch the wood as I did that. And so there's the final reveal. I love it. So the last thing that needs to be done is to seal this. So I used what is called tongue oil and I read a lot about what to use that is food safe. What I found out from several different woodworkers is that almost anything is food safe if, if it is dried so completely that there is no smell at all. And what I found out is that tongue oil is one of the most uh, food safe and it actually takes about a day to dry and I did four coats and so it was one coat a day for several days and I at first put it on the cloth and then rubbed it on and then found out it actually was much easier to just dump it on the board and rub it around and I went over the edge into uh, the part that wasn't painted to get it uh, completely sealed. And here we go. I laid out just a little bit of my daughter's favorite cheeses to kind of show you the size of this. It's big and is perfect for a lot of cheeses and a big uh, fancy charcuterie board. If you would like some ideas for a charcuterie board, please go to our Facebook page, which is called Coming Home. And in the files section, you can find a list of uh, items that you can print off to make a wonderful charcuterie board. Thanks for joining me to watch me uh, make Lindsay's wonderful birthday gift. I hope hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll subscribe and join me next time for more fun ideas on my channel.